Hello everyone, welcome to another video on my channel and where you did this. Uh, this is your host Mahmoud Nouer. Today we'll be diving deep into homeostasis and executory uh, system. Uh, we'll be, we're going to be speaking about the structure and how it works, the forces behind it, etc. etc. Please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and share this with your friends. And don't forget to leave a comment of what topic you want me to cover next. Alright, let's start. So, the kidney function is to regulate blood volume and osmolarity and it consists of basically three processes, filtration, secretion, and reabsorption. Osmolarity, uh, for you who don't know, is the measure of the concentration of the solute particles in a solution, how much of the solute um, is, in, the, is uh, in ratio with the uh, solution. All right? Kidney produces urine flowing into the ureter at the renal and pelvis so this is the ureter all right and then this is the renal pelvis and then from the ureter and um, it goes to extends to the urethra where the urine is collected in the bladder and uh, secreted in the urethra now there are two type of a uh, blood vessel pathways that occur here there is the efferent into the nephron from the heart to the kidney and then there is efferent away from the kidney all right, so the kidney has a portal system consisting of two capillary beds. It goes from the medulla to the efferent arterialis, right? Because there is the renal artery here. This is where the blood comes in from the heart and then extends into smaller arterialis. And then you have the glimmerous. So this is the glimmerous here. And then the glimmerous has a Bauman's uh, capsule underneath it and then it goes uh, away so the affair, uh, afferent we said it goes into and then they take the blood that recirculates and goes into the afferent arterioli and then it goes to the second capillary bed surrounding the loop of Henle uh, vasa recta so uh, there are multiple uh, like names or the st structure of a nephron has multiple parts so we're going to be speaking about it later so nephrons what are nephrons? I mentioned it a lot. So nephrons are the filtering unit made up of glimmerous and a tubo. So this kidney, it's made up of a lot of nephrons, almost 1 million uh, nephrons. All right. They're located at the renal cortex and the renal medulla. So the nephron structure, like I was saying, it goes from the uh, glimmerous and uh, glimmers has the uh, Bowman's capsule underneath it and then it goes to proximal uh, convoluted tubal or PCT all right and then the uh, extends into two parts the descending uh, loop of Henle and then you got the ascending loop of Henle all right and then it goes to a distal convoluted tube DCT and then into collecting dust all right so it goes glimmerous PCT, uh, descending, ascending, DCT, and then collecting. All right, this is just an easy way to just remember the first words of each. And then we already said the bladder is where the urine is stored, and it's made up of distressor uh, muscles where parasympathetic activity takes control. Right, and it's made of two sphincters, internal and extern uh, external sphincters are really significant in allowing um what goes in what goes out and we spoke about sphincters and digestive system uh, if the blood volume decreases blood osmolarity decreases so if there is less of the solution and a lot of the solute the blood osmolarity increases and it then it ends up in retaining water the body keeps in like excess water so low volume high concentrated urine you see how your urine sometimes is highly concentrated because of not a lot of blood volume. Uh, next, we have uh, the first part, which is filtration. Filtration occurs by passive transport. Fluid is collected from blood, known as filtrate, and then the movement of the fluid happens by startling forces, hydrostatic and oncotic pressure. All right, so filtration, blood goes through the the it goes to a nephron, and then filtration happens a filtrate and um, there's an exchange 
occurs and the movement of the fluids is by startling forces. So what is passive transport? Passive transport is where molecules or ions move across the membrane from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration without the need for energy input from the cell. So in that case, for instance, you got the uh, glomerous uh, capillaries, high pressure, move into like the Bauman's uh, for them to go through the tubules and loop of Henle. We're going to be speaking about that very soon. <clears throat> so the kidney pushes fluid from the arterial, uh, from the renal artery to the tubular, uh, the tubes, and then pushes fluid from the afferent arterioli to the nephron. All right. The kidney wants to start fil filtering the blood. All right. So osmolarity of the blood is higher than of the Bauman's uh, space. There is opposing pressure pu uh, pushing against to uh, pushing towards the arterioli, but fluids move toward uh, the nephron. So, like I said, there are multiple startling forces involved in this. So, I just drew something real quick here. So, you got here. This is the Bauman's uh, capsule, and this is the uh, glomerulus uh, capillaries. So. Basically, uh, we're going to speak about glomerulus capillaries. Glomerulus capillaries are special type of capillaries in the kidneys. They're different than the other types. They have high, higher blood pressure or higher hydrostatic pressure than the other capillaries. And the high blood pressure uh, in these glomerulus capillaries help push the blood through the filtration membrane and into the uh, capsule, uh, into the Bowman's capsule. All right. Hydrostatic pushes. And then there is another another force the oncotic pressure or also known as osmotic pressure so oncotic pressure it basically sucks or draws the uh, water into uh, the blood and it's a force created by the presence of proteins such as uh, albumin uh, albumin in the blood and these proteins create an osmotic pressure that pulls fluid back into the glomerular uh, capillaries so there is basically a two forces pushing up and the force pushing down. So basically, um, the glomerulus uh, capillaries are pushing towards the um, Bauman's capsule and then the Bauman's capsule, hydrostatic pressure is pushing against it and oncotic pressure is sucking um, the water back into the glomerulus uh, arterioli. And hydrostatic pressure depends on the force over volume of the plasma pressing against the area and then there is more blood more uh, more force that's why for instance the hydro hydrostatic pressure really uh, relates to uh, the high blood pressure or the blood pressure in general in blood vessels and then alcotic pressure depends on the particles next we have the secretion so they the uh, what do you call it uh, they're done the glomerulus capillaries blah 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 exchange happened now the Bauman's capsule uh, finish with filtration okay it got uh, it got what it had it got what it wanted from the um, the capillaries from the blood right now it goes to a um, uh, secretion so nephron secrete salts acids and bases and urea into the tubules uh, by active or passive transport Right, so secretion nephrons secrete salt acid bases and urea into the tubule and filtrate moves anywhere by the Bauman's capsule so it moves starts moving now to the PCT and DCT and descending and ascending loop of Henle and then we got the reabsorption uh, which happens next in which certain substances such as glucose and amino acids are reabsorbed into the blood and reabsorption uh, occurs uh, under a certain con condition they have to be small things like glucose fatty acids to make it through glomerular pores so when they're reabsorbed da, 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 they have to be reabsorbed here uh, they go into other capillaries which surround the um, uh, the nephron okay but they, they can have big things like polypeptide chains or, uh, or certain uh, large chains, they, they won't go through the glomerous poles. It pours, my bad. And then filtrate, then after it goes, da, 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 it's done, it enters the PCT, where majority of the salt, glucose, amino acids, like I said, are reabsorbed. So they're reabsorbed in the PCT, 
okay and the pct secretes waste such as h plus urea nh3 and k plus so these are the wastes right and then interstium or is the area around uh, the nephron that exchanges solute with so interstium is basically um, blood vessels there uh, they exchange salts and glucose amino acids with right and then as you move deeper in the kidney concentration of solutes in the interstium increases so interstium stays isotonic with the loop of henley and no rush for collapse of water into the descending loop next we have the ascending loop which is permeable to salt and interstium interstium more lived favoring removal of salt from the filtrate and it has a diluting segment that helps with uh, the active transport and next after the ascending loop, we have the uh, DCT or the distal convoluted tube, which responds to aldosterone. So aldosterone's main job is reabsorption of sodium and water uh, secretion. It reabsorbs that, right? And the collecting, and then lastly, collecting dust is the final concentration is altered due to the permeability of water modified by aldosterone. Anything not absorbed by collecting dust will be excreted. Uh, in the form of urine right and then ADH uh, adds holes in the collecting dust so water can pass more the more water absorbed the more the concentration of the urine kidneys control the amount of water or salt absorbed into the water and then the more water more water volume in the blood it means more blood pressure and then we got aldosterone it's only secreted when the low pressure uh, works on DCT and collecting dust to reabsorb sodium. So aldosterone uh, gets activated when there is low pressure on DCT and uh, the collecting dust to reabsorb sodium. ADH alters the osmolarity and increases the concentration uh, causing the reabsorption of water. So both ADH and um, aldosterone help with the reabsorption of water but aldosterone encourages uh, sodium reabsorption as well and then in case the kidney uh, needs to alter the ph it can either secrete h plus or bicarbonate uh, bicarbonate ions so if the ph let's say the ph is too low okay the kidney releases or excretes more h plus uh, and reabsorbs more bicarbonate um, um ions but what if the ph is too high a k excretes more bicarbonate ions and reabsorbs h plus all right thank you so much for tuning in uh, hopefully uh, this was a good video and of course have a blessed day